Throughout history, people have been fascinated by organised crime. From the Sicilian Mafia to MS-13, the world has found gangsters to be both terrifying and fascinating. The triads of China may seem like just another gang, but their history is far more mysterious. Not many know that they began life as warrior monks, nor is it known that their initiation ceremony involves an ancient custom and the scary ritual of a mock execution, or that triad gangs use the positions of teacups on a table to signal peace or war. Today we will learn about how the triads made fortunes in the ports of China in the 1920s and 30s, how they overran Hong Kong following the Chinese Civil War, and how one triad leader nearly brought Hong Kong to its knees. This is Knowledge Voice. The triads are a secretive and dangerous criminal organisation. With a presence in virtually every city with a sizable Chinese community, they are one of the world's strongest criminal fraternities. But the triads did not begin life as gangsters, but as devout Buddhist monks in 17th century China. During the reign of Emperor Kangxi, there was a violent revolt, and the emperor turned to the monks of the Shaoliu Monastery in Fujian province. These warrior monks defeated the rebellion, and the delighted emperor gave them rewards. But this provoked jealousy, and the traitor monk Chang Manyu told the emperor the monks were plotting to overthrow the monarchy. Imperial troops besieged the monastery, and only five men managed to escape. These monks were left with a burning desire to avenge their fallen brothers. They swore oaths, agreed secret passwords and hand signals, and scattered, vowing to bring down the Chinese government, however long it took. These monks became known as the Triads. Triads could be a reference to the number three, which in Chinese ritual magic is said to be very powerful. Alternatively, it could be because of the monks' habit of venerating three elements, earth, man, and heaven. These monks founded gangs that would develop over the centuries into fully-fledged criminal syndicates. The leader of a gang is known as a Shan Chu, aided by a deputy leader or Fu Shan Chu. These two men are also known as older brothers. The gang also has a welfare officer, who donates money to worthy causes to win public support. Perhaps the most important member is the Hung Quan, or Red Pole. He trains gang members in combat and coordinates violent strikes on rivals. These gangs built up their strength over the centuries, and were always ready to undermine Chinese rulers and make money in the process. The Triads experienced a golden age following China's defeat in the Boxer Rebellion of the early 1900s. The peace treaty gave European powers special legal and territorial control over Chinese ports. In these port cities like Shanghai, Chinese law did not apply and Chinese police had limited powers. Having a place with limited policing and a contradictory legal code was heaven to a criminal gang. Triads moved into the port cities of China and happily provided gambling and prostitution to their vice-loving customers. The Triads were also used to violently crush strikes by Chinese trade unionists and communists. Their decision to attack the communists would prove to be a long-term mistake. The Triad port city boom years would come to an end in 1949, when communist forces won the Chinese Civil War. The Communist Party captured Triads and publicly machine-gunned them in sports stadiums and town squares. The treaty ports were brought back under Chinese control by Mao's government, and the Triads who survived his crackdowns needed new pastures. Fortunately for them, there was plenty right on their doorstep. Just outside of the Chinese Communist control was Hong Kong. British-controlled Hong Kong was very rich, and thousands of mainland refugees fled there after the Communist victory on the mainland. Among them were Triads looking for new sources of income. For the Triads of Hong Kong, the city was perfect. It had a free market system that prided itself on low tax, with almost no government regulation and interference in business, and a means by which goods could be imported and exported with little official supervision. It was a perfect operating environment for the underworld. In addition, the Triads became wealthy enough to bribe police to look the other way, and bribe prison wardens to take good care of Triads who were jailed. By the mid-1950s, mainland Triads were so powerful and ruthless that the British authorities began to fear that their wealthy and usually stable colony could be totally overrun by Triads. During the 1950s, a series of anti-government riots and protests broke out in Hong Kong. The police were overrun dealing with the protesters, and with the police busy elsewhere, the Triads showed no mercy in expanding their criminal activities. There were already old criminal clans active in Hong Kong, but they had lived in peace with each other for many years. The clans observed strict territorial boundaries and business interests to minimise bloody infighting. But unfortunately for Hong Kong's established gangs, triads from the mainland held these old arrangements in contempt. They used ruthless violence to hack out their own place in the Hong Kong underworld, and triads like the Green Tangs from Shanghai quickly established themselves as a major player. The unrest eventually subsided, and under new laws like the Emergency Detention Order, the Hong Kong police began to make arrests. These arrests included a raid where a triad initiation ceremony was interrupted and later described. It can be seen from this ancient procedure the religious and spiritual roots of the triad clans. In order to join a triad gang, the initiate enters a special room that serves as a temple. He will pass through a number of doorways, where armed triads subject him to ritualised questioning about his loyalty and commitment. 
The recruit then bows before a statue of the Chinese god of war, Quan Yu, the patron god of the triads. The recruit then approaches the altar, where three paper mache figures are present. The triad incense master takes a sword from the altar and ceremonially beheads all three paper mache figures. The first is of the imperial general who stormed the triad's original monastery. The second is the traitor monk whose rumours led to the attack. The third and final is the emperor Kang Shi, who was the emperor when the triad monastery was destroyed. Then comes the high point of the ceremony. The recruit kneels down as if to be executed by beheading himself. As the sword is placed on his neck, the triad master asks, what is stronger, this blade or your neck? To which the recruit replies, my neck. By this he means, even if threatened with execution by the authorities, he will not be afraid to die for his triad brothers. The recruit then chants 38 oaths around the themes of maintaining secrecy, respecting superiors, and avenging any attack on the gang. To bring the ceremony to a close, a cockerel is sacrificed, and its blood drunk with a mixture of wine and the blood pricked from the recruit's fingers. In 1975, authorities in Singapore interrupted a triad initiation ceremony where over 100 recruits were ready to become gang members, and they found the paraphernalia of this ceremony at the site. Investigative journalist Sean O'Callaghan found that triad gangs developed secret signals for use in restaurants or tea houses. During negotiations with rival gangs, three cups of tea are poured and lined up. If the rival triad boss only drinks the centre mug, it means peace, but if he drinks all three, it means war. It was in the environment of a roaring economy and Hong Kong police corruption that one of the triad's most notorious ever gang bosses emerged, and his name is In Sik Ho. Ho had fled to Hong Kong from the mainland and found a triad gang there founded by men from his home province in China. One night, Ho was violently attacked by rival gang members, who broke his leg. Rather than go to the hospital and possibly attract police attention, he asked a traditional Chinese bone setter to help. The procedure was botched, and Ho walked with a limp for the rest of his life, earning him the nickname Crippled Ho. Despite his injury, he quickly proved his intelligence and discretion, and served as a go-between for different triad gangs. Extraordinarily, he became so respected in this role, he was given membership of two different clans. In the 1960s and 70s, the Vietnam War was waging, and as it did, triads in Thailand took advantage of the collapsing security and policing in the region to sell a new product that organised crime would soon make billions of dollars from and that product was heroin. Ho quickly saw the money that could be made from heroin, and the way that Hong Kong's laissez-faire economy and strategic position, which made it well-placed to make it a major hub for global crime. The triads had focused on China or Hong Kong, but Ho had a plan to flood the world with heroin. He formed business deals with Thai suppliers. He set up a fake import-export business, and arranged for ships to take heroin from the Golden Triangle to international waters. Once the ship was just outside Hong Kong territorial waters, a junk or sandpan boat would sail out to collect the cargo. Ho also had contacts in the Hong Kong police, and hefty bribes ensured that the shipment could be loaded unopposed. To make sure his gang was loyal and to prevent clumsiness, he deducted their wages if any heroin was lost. One of his most daring moves was stealing heroin shipments from a rival gang. His gang stole Chinese mainland army uniforms, and sailed a ship to intercept the shipment, posing as Chinese coast guards. They then handcuffed the crew and forced them below deck, as would happen in any regular customs arrest. And while one group of his gang loaded the stolen heroin onto their own boat, Bags of cement were dumped in the ocean, to lead the rival gang to believe Chinese forces had dumped the drugs in the sea. But one day, Ho's luck would run out. Once the widespread corruption of Hong Kong police was identified, the then British governor, Sir Murray McLeahouse, acted decisively. He set up the Independent Commission Against Corruption. Prior to then, the police investigated corruption, and needless to say, would never find themselves guilty. But the Independent Commission would take this out of police hands and ruthlessly rooted out corruption. The cleaned up police force could now pursue Ho and other triads. After Ho reportedly murdered a supplier who double crossed him, a member of his gang decided to testify against him. His trial saw a number of witnesses, many heavily disguised, giving evidence. Ho was convicted to a 35 year jail sentence, but not before offering a $10 million reward for anyone who could spring him from jail. He also offered a $1 million contract on each of the police who had convicted him. Their families had to be sent to England for safety. Ho was 16 years into his sentence before dying of cancer in 1991. Hong Kong just about survived Ho and the triads, but the triads had spread across the world. In many world cities with a Chinese community, the triads became involved in crime. They were major players in heroin smuggling into Western Europe, especially in the Netherlands where relaxed laws on drugs and soft penalties for smugglers made it a perfect hub. They also sought protection money from Chinese businesses in the Chinatowns of the West. The triads made clear they were in charge, and the police were not to be involved in the affairs of the community. As the police in many American cities found, almost no one would disobey this command from the community not to involve the police in their affairs. The police in America often had the saying, this is Chinatown. Today the triads remain a challenge to law enforcement across the world. Somewhat worryingly, Hong Kong is once again in a state of mass unrest and rioting. 
The last time this happened was in the 1950s, which allowed the triads to expand their activities while the police had their hands full. Given the Hong Kong police are once again occupied with mass rioting, maybe the triads will once again take ruthless advantage. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.